Hello everyone and welcome to Motorhomes with American Tom. I'm Tom and this is the all new 2024 Thor Illuminate BB35. It's a great motorhome, one of our best sellers in the last six months or so and there's some great features about it. First we're going to go um, around the outside, then we're going to go inside and take a look. We're going to go through the good, the bad and the ugly. body paint job. This is what they call granite dust with the grays, the silver, and the white mixed in. It's a really great look. Let's start taking a look at some of the outside side features. I want to first point out that right here on the window or next to the window you've got a chrome mirror with a built-in camera. This has side cameras as well as the back. 22 and a half inch wheels that are part of this 22,000 pound uh, gross vehicle weight rating Ford motorhome chassis. This also has your 7.3 liter V8 Godzilla motor, so extra torque, extra horsepower, better fuel economy. One thing I really like about that motor is that they dropped it down 11 inches, so with doing that, they had a, a straight drive shaft, so it's a very smooth operating vehicle that takes out a lot of the um, vibration that you used to have in the V10. So moving on here, this first bay here is a pass-through storage bay goes all the way through from one side to the next. I want to point out this really nice um, plastic piece there. It has a built-in place where you can spray this clean and it'll drain out by itself. Your next one here, another pass-through bay. Um, I want to point out here that they also painted your handles. You know, a lot of them, they're going to leave these black. I think it just adds a little bit to the overall decor. This is a tankless suburban hot water heater, so unlimited amount of hot water. This pairs very well with the water miser feature this, this has, so that you don't waste any of that hot water either. Right here, you've got a pass-through bay storage as well. Moving on back, we've got a city water hookup and then another pass-through bay. This one actually goes about three quarters of the way through. So you got the two full pass-throughs or three, and then this one, which I'd say is about three quarters. Right here, you've got your power hookup and a cable hookup for exterior cable. And this is your wet bay. So you have an outside um, shower with hot and cold built in. You got a black tank flush a dump station right here for your black and gray tank. I like that it's up inside of the bay. It makes it a little easier to get to where it's not hanging down underneath. Um, you can also see it has a SantaCon um, pump system. So that's a macerator pump that's built into this vehicle as well. A really nice upgrade. Your rear axle here, you can see that 22 and a half inch all aluminum Alcoa wheel. The bigger wheels and tires give you better, uh, better stability on the road. More rubber on the road means more stability there as well. 22,000 pound chassis, again, is going to give you the extra stability. The more you weigh, the less you sway. Now, something else Thor does that's really unique about the chassis is they send it to a company called Moorride for a chassis upfit. They add extra steel and structure to the baseline of the motorhome to get a better weight distribution, additional rigidity, and an overall better ride. It makes a big difference whenever you drive one of these in comparison to other RVs with just a normal Ford chassis. Um, moving on to this next bay here, we're going to see our generator. Now this is the Cummins Onan 5500 watt generator. This is going to run both ACs and the whole coach. Um, it's very efficient, easy to work with here, and plenty of power. Here's your fuel fill. This has an 80 gallon fuel tank. So plenty of fuel to get you going there on the road as well as using your generator. And then your last bay here, which is locked, this one is going to be a pass-through bay, but we'll take a look at it from the other side. Um, here on the back, I want to point out that it has a molded fiberglass cap. So it really has a nice look to it. You have a camera mounted up on your uh, brake light there. You have an 8,000 pound hitch here at the bottom, so plenty of additional towing strength if you need it. And then a built-in ladder to get you up on the roof. Now up on the roof, there's a couple features that I think are really important. You've got the WineGuard Connect 2.0 wireless system. You've got different vents with vent covers already built in, two ACs, and then most importantly, you have 300 watts of solar. So a lot of RVs have uh, solar prep, solar ready, maybe a 100 watt panel. This comes standard with 300 watts of solar to keep your batteries nice and charged up. So moving over here to the passenger side, this first bay, 
is a pass-through bay that goes over to that other door we were looking at, but it's a little bit wider than the others. And on this side, it has the extra height, so it's got a ton of storage. Really nice setup right there. This next one is your outside kitchen. So right here, you've got a sink to keep things clean. You've got some storage up top and on the bottom and an outside refrigerator. I kind of like the height right here of this thing, but it gives you a little extra shape when you might be cooking. Um, now up above here, you have an armless awning. Lots of great length to that. Here on the passenger side of the vehicle, there is no slide. So it really gives you a nice space to hang out next to the RV. This is a great tailgater's RV really comfortable and easy to uh, use when you're somewhere because you don't have that slide protruding out into your camp area. As we move up right here, this is going to be your propane tank. So that looks like a 26.2 gallon propane tank. It's a huge amount of propane. That's going to last you a really long time. And with some of the features you have here, you don't use propane for everything. So it is going to save you some uh, efficiency there. This is going to be an outside plug. You've got your furnace exhaust right here. You have an outside propane connect that hooks up to your onboard propane so you can just bring a grill and hook it up right to that and uh, conveniently have a way to cook outside here you've got your two house batteries a nice thing right there to strap things down to but really easy to access here and giving you a little bit of extra storage it's a nice setup uh, moving up to the front here these are the other side of your two pass-through bays so both pass-throughs, plenty of space here. You have a fresh water drain right there. So if you want to drain the whole thing out, that's pretty easy to do. Also want to point out that these are slam latch doors. So really good mechanics on that, works pretty good. And then here you have an outside TV and speaker. Looks like we're locked right now, but we can get that thing opened up here in a minute. You've got a Bluetooth speaker built in there at the bottom and then a big TV that comes out and turns. Nice windows right here above that and then a potable water fill right here. So let's take a look inside and see what we got going on in there. Now I left the slide in on this one so we can see what it looks like. As it slides in, look at this thing. There we go. So first thing we're noticing here as we come in is you got plenty of space with the slide turned in. Plenty of walkway here, you can get to the refrigerator, open up the bathroom door without an issue, get to your bunks and the big king size bed in the back. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened up. All right, now that we got this opened up, you can see the great amount of space we got here. We're gonna take a look at the cab area up front and the floor plan, but before we go any further, if you're enjoying the video, like, follow, subscribe, share it with your friends, anything to get the information out there so folks can learn more and more about this RV. Also, while we're here, I wanna give a big thanks to our help here, Tucker. How's it going? So what do you do for a living, Tuck? I also sell RVs, and unfortunately, I am your younger brother too as well. Yeah, Tug's a pretty good guy. He's here helping us with the RVs. Thanks for the great help. We're going to enlist him a little bit more in the future here to talk about the things we dislike and we like about the RV. But first things first, now that we got this opened up, let's take a look at the cab area. Now, I really like the way Thor puts this one together. They've got nice, big, comfortable seats. You can see how things are organized in a pretty clear way. You've got Ford's really nice setup here um, with all your information right up front. Steering wheel's very comfortable. But everything is laid out in a way that's easy to get to. You've got your Genstar controls, fans, the sunshade for the electric shade up front as well as your cab lights. And then here on the left side, you've got your emergency start, fog light, heated mirrors, which are power as well. Um, and then your automatic leveling system. So this is an automatic hydraulic system. You press on, you press auto, and you can just walk right away from it. A few other nice features are you have a lot of USB plugs. I know this one also connects to your main um, dash here to do Apple CarPlay or um, Android Auto. So it's really easy to use. You also have built-in navigation here. And this is also where you can display your camera systems. You know, anytime you turn your signal on, or you put it in reverse, it's gonna show you what those cameras see. Um, uh, also, they kind of bring this down lower to the ground so it's easy to get in and out of this seat. Both of these seats do turn around as well, so it adds a little bit of extra space to your front um, living area. Now here on the passenger side, this has a bit of an office setup. So this piece comes up and out to you. You have electrical outlets underneath um, where you can plug in. Um, I also see some speakers here that are part of the surround sound system up front. 
so it's a pretty comfortable place to work while you're on the road or just to be comfortable as you're moving through. Um, above us, I know they hide it pretty well, but this is a drop down bed. The Luminate um, moved to a different component than they previously were using. Before they had a Schwintech system, but the system they use now is a lot stronger, a lot quieter, and more smooth. And uh, I don't think it's going to have the same bugs we had with the uh, Schwentech. So I'm really happy to see that they upgraded this part. Um, here in the front part of the coach, you have kind of a, a, a front living area. You have your couch, which is directly across from your TV here on the driver's side. Dinette right here with some extra storage underneath both of those seats. I see you have a wireless phone charger. You have an outlet here. Um, and you have USB hook up there, um, but it's just a very open, comfortable space. Um, you have windows on both sides with these slow rise MCD shades. So that's a really nice upgrade they have there. And then this big window here on the passenger side. This is going to be a very comfortable RV to travel in. Um, when it's closed up, you got all this extra space. Everybody's up here in the front. Um, you can have some extra storage up here, which is pretty nice, but it's just going to be on a long road trip, just a little easier to get around. Um, I also want to point out that behind this, you have some cup holders and some extra outlets, lights built in, some more speakers for the surround sound. Let's see up here, a little bit of extra storage. Um, down here by the door, there's a few things I want to point out too. For one, you have your battery disconnect. You've got some controls for the um, multiplex wiring system that connects to the light master, the awning control, step well, ceiling lights, and then also you have a control for your inverter. So this vehicle has a Xantrax um, pure sine wave inverter, which allows you to use your battery's power for different components and parts of the RV. Things like your refrigerator, things like the TVs, and other electrical components in the RV can be used without running the generator. This works great for dry camping, great when you're on the road, and it allows for your vehicle to stay charged much better for longer term. Now check this out. You got a huge refrigerator freezer here. French door set up. Big freezer on the left. Big fridge on the right, but it's just a little wider and a little bigger than you see a lot of them have. And then you also have some controls there on the fridge side, which lets you run things a little bit easier. Huge pantry right here with a nice pull-out drawer. So really good space for all the food. This is a bunkhouse floor plan, so it's likely to have a lot of people in it. You're going to need some extra space for everybody to have some food. Um, now over here to the kitchen, we've got a ton of storage. Really nice drawers, really nice spot right there for your trash can. There's never a good place for one of those. And then a ton of counter space. Here above your two-sided sink, you also have some extra storage built in there. Okay, um, right here you have a big convection microwave. And surprisingly enough, you have an oven too. So you get a little bit of be the best of both worlds here. So one really unique feature of the Thor Luminate has got to be the Firefly Multiplex Wiring System. There are a few different systems out there for Multiplex. I mean, a lot of RVs don't even have Multiplex. Um, the benefit of a Multiplex system is that it brings everything together in one easy-to-use program. But the Firefly in particular is very user-friendly, quick and responsive and easy to use. If you can take a look right here, you have controls for your lighting, the electrical system, your ACs, fans, the overall coach controls, things like your slides, awnings, and switches, um, diagnostics, and then your settings. Here you can hook it up to your mobile app, which is really cool. You can operate this whole thing anywhere you go. Um, but most RVs in this category aren't gonna have the nice Firefly system like this, just like you have in a much more expensive big diesel coach. Now moving on to the back, again this is a bunkhouse floor plan. You see both of your bunks right here. Nice six foot in length bunks, very comfortable seating right here. On this side, um, you have tablet holders, USB plugs, and normal GFI outlets, as well as cable hookups if you want to hook up to your satellite or TV. Something pretty cool here is that this will fold up and out of the way, and then you can use this for a hanging closet. So even if you don't use these bunks all the time, they're there when you need them. 
and you can just use this for extra storage. I've seen people do all kinds of cool things with these, whether it's making it into an office, having a place for their pets, a place to put those big Rubbermaid containers. I had one uh, lady who had a, a parrot set up in here. I just thought that was really cool. Right across from your bunks, you've got some extra storage. Not a lot of depth to it, but you definitely have some extra there. Every little bit counts in an RV like this, especially one that's going to have a lot of people in it. And then right under your bunks, you have some pull-out drawers with really good depth to them. So the kids have a place to keep their stuff too. Um, your bathroom right here in the center of the coach. This is a side bath. You can see you got a lot of good counter space here. A very big deep shower with a glass um, enclosure built around it. You've got a mirror behind the vanity with some good storage, lots of drawers. Um, you can control your tankless water heater right there. Now this vehicle has what's called the water miser. So that recirculates the hot water that you're not using so it doesn't just go to waste. If you're going to use your propane to heat it up and you're going to get it hot in that way, you might as well not waste it. Um, efficiency is everything with an RV. Moving back here to the master suite, you've got a king size bed with two big side tables on either side. Storage on both sides, two big cabinets, um, one on each side, as well as a good space right there. USB plugs on both sides, as well as your outlets. And then you should have a little storage underneath the bed as well. Well, a big storage. So that's gonna be a place where you put things you don't use all the time, but you certainly have it when you need it. Across from your king size bed, You've got some storage here. Oh, and there you have the ladders um, for the bunks and also for your drop-down bunk up front. And then the table that goes in between your front two chairs and a really nice place to use. On top of that hanging storage, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six very large, deep drawers to use. And then also you have some hidden storage behind your TV. Um, there's nice windows in here too. You know, you've got a window right across from the bed that opens up. You've got a window also on the back of the RV. You can see right here. Let's a nice natural light in, which is a pretty good setup. So now that we've seen the floor plan of the RV, I kind of want to talk about what makes this unique and the type of person that might run into it. I mean, obviously families with the bunks, um, the more people you have in an RV, the more these spaces become important. You know, if you got a couple kids or a couple guests with you, um, you don't want to always have to put the dinette down or the couch to be in use for sleeping because then you lose those things. With the bunks, you can keep those things. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think this RV is a great layout for a family. You got lots of space inside. It's great for traveling because it's easy to get through the RV. Plenty of seat belts and places to sit with no slide on the passenger side of the vehicle. It's great for tailgating and really hanging out in those different places where you're going to end up going. Um, so I think a, for a, a family layout, it really works out great. Um, it is a little higher end than most bunk houses, so it has some extra upgrades that are pretty nice with the multiplex wiring, the full body paint upgraded solar and electronic systems but the con to that is that it's going to cost a little bit more than what most bunk houses out there are going to be set up as. I mean everything comes with a, a pro and con to it. Um, I think that some of the things I like best about this are the electronic system, the upgraded features in the chassis, in the full body paint job, in the bigger refrigerator, and this floor plan itself. Um, some of the cons I would probably go off on are that it is going to be more expensive than some other bunk houses out there are going to be. Uh, this RV has an MSRP of $231,885. So even with map pricing, that's minimum advertised pricing, you're going to see a price in the low 170s. Of course, a general RV, we can do better pricing than that, but that's the least we can advertise at this point. Um, I'd say another con here, I can think of one. Um, Oven. That's kind of tough. Well, I guess that's a good point, Tucker. Um, that you have the uh, convection microwave and an oven. Maybe that's a place that we could have uh, used for a um, an extra storage drawer. What else do you have? 
Uh, I agree with that. I just feel it's unnecessary to have a convection microwave that works as an oven and a conventional oven. I think that could definitely be used as an additional storage area. I mean, no customer has ever said there's too much storage in the RV, so as much as we can get as possible is always really important. Um, I would say that uh, maybe a washer dryer hookup in this model being with bunk beds, I see that being convenient with kids. How many pairs of clothes do you need to bring for children on a trip? Maybe only a couple, so they're wearing one and the other one's in the actual load itself. That might be a nice feature to have too as well. Um, I do like the fact that there are no ducks in the floor on this one, so you don't have to worry about things falling in it, kids stepping on it, maybe a catch out accidentally, you know, slide out catching it on the way in and out. That'd be a little tough too as well. So the number you see here at the bottom, that was uh, Tucker's phone number. So if you want to get a hold of him, you can give him a call. He works here at the Tampa store. I do want to point out one more con. Um, and that's the outside next to the outside kitchen. It had the propane hookup that you would use for a grill about 10 feet away from the kitchen area itself. So you'd either need to carry a really long um, quick connect hose or set up your um, your actual grill a good distance from that, but I think that's the major con. Overall, this is going to be a great bunkhouse floor plan, very family friendly with some wonderful features. Of course, here at General RV, we're going to be able to give you an excellent price. If you do have any additional questions, reach out to myself, American Tom here at General RV, or Tucker would be happy to help you out. And thanks again for checking us out. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll be reaching out to folks to answer any of those extra questions you have. Thanks again, and have a great day.